Okay, I got prep work, more prep work done. On the body, I am so tired of prep work on the body. Uh, I am just really ready to get this thing painted and hope I still can do it this year. What I wanted to talk about is um, where I am kind of at here. I have done a last coat of primer. I've got the couple areas that I wasn't too happy with done. And I've gone over it. I had a heavy coat of primer and then I went over it with 220 grit. Um, there were some areas that were fairly rough and bumpy, um, almost like the paint, maybe the humidity when I painted the last coat, some of the areas that I put it on thick, or it was probably maybe because I put it on a bit too thick. It was kind of bumpy. And so I went over the whole thing with 220 first to get those bumpy areas down. And then it came time that if I am finally going to get ready to paint this white, I need to do 400, or at least I want to do 400. Um, first off, let me say, I had always thought that 220 was as far as you should go before you paint something because the paint needs something to dig into and adhere to. And if you go too smooth before you paint it, the paint will peel off because it's not grabbing uh, doesn't have like a surface to grab onto so I'm still leery about that I don't don't quite know you know what the deal is with that but the legs and the horseshoes and battery boxes actually everything I've done so far I actually did go over with 400 grit before I painted it and so far they look really nice apart from my you know issues with painting too thick so I, I'm, I'm thinking 400 is definitely okay to go that, um, that high of a grit and the paint won't have a problem. Um, I'm sure people are going to tell me that I can go even higher than that. But 400, honestly, is, is pretty darn smooth. Um, it's, it's getting rid of like 99% of the swirl marks, sanding marks from the 220 grit. So... Um, I'm really happy with 400 grit as a as a place to to stop um, before painting. So what I did today was take this outside. It had been done with I'd gone over it like I said with 220, and I wanted to do 400. So um, what I did was I did wet sanding for the first time. Now, why I did wet sanding? The whole idea I just don't like because it sounds like a pain in the neck. And it kind of is. But here is why I decided to do it. Now, the video I'm going to post before this one about repainting the horseshoes that go on the uh, shoulders, our two shoulders. I sanded that white paint down. That was a finished coat of white paint, but it had paint runs in it so I sanded it down with 400 grit and because that thing the area I was painting was pretty much all flat the top surface was flat and then I was printing the sides and those were flat I used a sanding block to help make sure things were sanded flat this is the 400 grit after sanding the two horseshoes it is completely clogged up with white paint now, after I would sand for just a few minutes, I'd slap this thing on the leg of my pants. And then I'd start going again, slap this on my jeans and keep going. And still, it ended up this clogged up where you're sanding with this and these, these raised areas, because they got chunks of the paint in it, are kind of swirling around and the sandpaper's not really doing its job. So... <sighs> It's, it's a real waste of sandpaper. It's like, well, this is pretty much toast now. I can't, I don't want to use this again because, you know, it's just going to be these high spots of paint. And, I, you know, whether I, I can go with my finger and I can get some of this stuff off, but I can't really get all of it off or it's going to, you know, if I can use a brush or something, I might take the grit with it. So it's like, well, maybe I'll try wet sanding. So... Unlike what I usually do, when I haven't done something before, I hit 
the internet, and I look for how-to videos. How do you do wet sanding? For some reason, I didn't. Um, maybe because I know how to sand, and wet sanding is using wet-dry sandpaper, which this is, and this is, same thing. So I figured, okay, well, a bucket of water and a piece of sandpaper, wet, dry sandpaper, and, and away I go. What, what could be to it? So I started on the bottom, and without lifting it up, the bottom is fairly large, flat areas. You can see that's, that's the inside, so it's the side facing down that I sanded. So it's four sides of large, flat area. So I'm like, okay, it's the bottom. If, if I do something wrong and mess it up, who cares? It's the bottom, easily fixed, or again, not a big deal, because it's the bottom, and who's going to look on the bottom? And the skirt covers up a portion of the area also. Um, once the skirt is attached through those bolts. So I got my sandpaper and I got a bucket and put about four inches of cold water in the bottom of it and I got the sandpaper wet and started sanding the bottom and my first thought was oh my goodness this is a huge mess it is this big nasty slurry of gray primer bits and water and I can't see what I'm doing. I'm so used to sanding dry where, you know, you sand an area and then you blow the sand dust off or I use the, the back of my hand and just, or whatever, palm of my hand and kind of wipe the dust away to see, you know, how good of a job I did, if there's any other, you know, scratches that I missed in the general area. And I couldn't do that because it's all covered with slurry, wet, nasty, you know, and this and the sandpaper was just all covered with it and I'm like okay this kind of sucks and I just adjusted my technique a little as I went um, I put a little less water on the sandpaper so it was still wet and but not like dripping wet to the part point where there was you know paint and water dripping off this part but that water was obviously moving around and this was sliding on the water so I knew it wasn't too dry but it wasn't so wet that it was just making a giant mess so that seemed to be working better and then I went and got a rag because still there's this slurry of wet grit basically everywhere and how do I see you know what I've done so I got a rag and after I went around it I just went with the rag and got all that gunk on the rag and then rinsed the rag off in the bucket and went over it again and because I'm doing this in shadow I, I can't really see very well how good I've done um, because this thing is is all glued together I didn't want to sit somewhere where the Sun was hitting it because I didn't know how long this would take me and I didn't want um, the chance of anything warping. So that was partly uh, my issue where I wasn't able to see very well how good of a job I did other than by touch and just kind of looking at it in the shade of the tree I was under. And I have to say, um, after running my hand over the area I did on the bottom, I was like, oh, dang, okay, yeah, that's, I mean, that's night and day compared to the 220 grit. I mean, that, that's some smooth stuff. So, the next thing that I also noticed, of course, was the fact that, put this back in the bucket, and depending on if I sanded a little bit longer where it started to get a bit dry, there'd be... Um, not this much, but there'd be, there'd be paint on it. And I thought when I first saw that, I'm like, oh, it's already choked with paint, like dry is. But I just held it like this with my fingers. I went like this with my thumb and was able to just brush off all the paint that was on it. And so I did the entire body with this one piece, which is probably about ready to be done. It's really kind of wrinkled 
and that's going to make the sanding a bit um, not quite as smooth probably because the the bit, bits that are um, bent will put more pressure down when you're sanding than the bits that are still flat or that's just my imagination I don't know but I, I think that getting the entire body with this one piece is is, is good enough and amazing because like I said this is two horseshoes well this did have a little bit of paint in it from something else that um, I was sanding with it before the horseshoes but not much hardly any at all the majority 90% of this is from two horseshoes and the surface area of two horseshoes is nowhere near the surface area of the entire body of this droid so really happy once I got the hang of it I'm um, just kind of knocking the knocking the paint off in the bucket, keeping it wet, but not soaking wet, so it was dripping all over the place. And again, I haven't taken it somewhere, and this is obviously not the place where I get good light on it to see any areas that I need to go over again. I'm sure there probably are some, but I'll just do it again. I'll just take more paper and wet it and just go over those areas. Um, before it gets um, painted. But again, the, the light in here is just not going to show it. And if you see any, I just wiped off with my finger, little slightly discolored areas. You can see kind of up in the corner. That's kind of the dried um, slurry of um, from sanding. So the water and the paint get wet in the slurry and then it kind of dries like that. So I was going over every area after I did it with a wet rag, but of course in the corners it's still kind of in there. So, I mean, obviously um, all of the seams I'm going to have to go over again to clean out before it gets painted. And all of these areas like this will have to be double checked to make sure there isn't loose filament. So it's not like 100% ready to paint right now. But, and again, down there you can see slightly lighter color. If I go over it with my finger, some of that will come off because my finger will get it. Um, but yeah, it, it looks, I mean, it feels, I should say, so much nicer than with the 220 grit. It's just, it, it is literally night and day. Not the 220 grit is 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 rough but it's just that this 400 grit is is so smooth i'm like what? i don't have a problem not going any further than this before i paint it going to 600 just to me is like really um why if there's any any imperfections in this 400 uh you know i can go over them again but anything anything after that is caused by the 400 Say any swirl marks that might be there from the 400 grit wet sanding are going to be so small that the, the paint is going to cover them. You're, you're just not going to see them. So really happy with the way that turned out. I'm happy that I actually tried wet sanding. Um, like I said, I still need to go over it and double check and, and look for areas. So it, it is not ready to be painted white yet, but it is getting pretty darn close, which is good because I'm pretty darn short on weather to be able to get this thing done this year with the coat of white. But just thought I'd share. Um, you might want to try wet sanding if you haven't. It wasn't as bad as I was afraid of. I've always just done dry. I've never done wet sanding before. And like I said, I would get this far and I just replace this piece of sandpaper with another and you end up spending quite a bit of money on sandpaper, especially if you're doing something like a full-sized droid. That's a lot of sandpaper to get clogged up and, and throw away compared to doing wet sanding um, one sheet, the whole body. So give it a try if you haven't and see what you think. And perhaps it'll change your mind and you'll do it if you were like me and hesitant at first. So that's uh second video done today. Happy that I got the whole thing sanded with 400 grit. Well, at least the first go around. Still need to go look at it in good light to see 
what else needs to be touched up. And I also got the horseshoes sanded with 400 grit the old way, dry sanded and then repainted today. And got some white trim painted on my house. So a really productive day today. And I can feel it. I'm really close to painting this thing. And I'm getting a little less worried about... Um, paint drips because I'm pretty sure I'm going to have some but as I said in the video where I'm talking about the horseshoes that I posted before this one um, it just might be the way I go now that I've tried wet sanding is after things get painted white just wet sand over them with 400 grit taking off any runs and then probably will not need to do any repainting and it should be a uniform white color and then might do the clear coat after that which will probably have to be next year because I, I, I'm lucky if I'm going to get this done with white and so much stuff that I have need to do that's already white that would need to do a clear coat if I'm going to do a clear coat that I just don't think I have the time but yeah, give wet sanding a shot if you haven't. Just cut a just cut a piece of sandpaper and try it on some scrap or a battery box or a you know a horseshoe or some piece that's uh, fairly small to see the results and if you like it. And maybe watch a how-to video again. I don't know why. For some reason, even though I had never done it, I just figured. I didn't need to watch a video, and my technique to begin with was pretty sloppy and kind of made a mess. But it was fairly easy to adjust from that. But I'd, I'd say go ahead and find yourself a how-to video and watch that before you uh, try it, because you might learn some tips that I didn't do. Uh, in fact, I am probably going to go watch a How to Wet Sand video at some point uh, before... I do any more wet sanding just to see what else I might have missed and any maybe some technique that I could improve so that's it uh, second video today we are still getting closer and closer to finally getting some white paint on this